All right, hello, hello, and welcome to the fourth lesson in Unit 3, Area 33, Australia in the World Economy, where we're going to be looking at exchange rates and some recent trends in terms of the Australia in the World Economy data. We're not going to go too heavily in detail on the trends, as they could change by the time you're studying this in probably six months' time, as I'm recording this in November of 2022. But this is going to be carrying on from when we talked about the terms of trade and net foreign debt and equities last time and the balance of payments. This is the last kind of new concept in the topic before we talk about international competitiveness in lesson five. So our key knowledge for today is all about the exchange rate, its meaning and measurements, as well as factors affecting its value, including relative interest rates, commodity prices, and the terms of trade. Demand for exports and imports, foreign investment, relative rates of inflation, credit ratings, and speculation. So there's all different, um, a lot of different factors here. All these ones listed in the key knowledge here basically means these are ones that VCAR can specifically ask about in a question. And for all of these, essentially what it means is, is that factor going to create more or less demand for the Australian dollar? So if we look at things like relative interest rates, if our interest rates are higher than overseas, that is going to say, so if our interest rates are higher than overseas, then overseas, what that's going to do is increase the demand for the Australian dollar as people want to invest in Australia, and that's going to lead to an appreciation. Commodity prices, if commodity prices rise, then the Australian dollar is going to have more demand, and therefore it's going to appreciate in value. The terms of trade, as we talked about before, if terms of trade rises, there's going to be more demand for the Australian dollar as there's more that we're getting for exports and less that we're paying for imports. Demand for exports and imports, same kind of deal. Foreign investment, if there's more investment coming into Australia, there's more demand for the Australian dollar. Relative rates of inflation, if our inflation rate is lower than overseas, it makes our exports more competitive and people want to buy them more, therefore more demand for the Australian dollar. Credit ratings, it depends how much. If our credit rating gets worse, we have to pay more interest on our foreign debt and therefore there's going to be more Australian dollars being supplied on the foreign exchange market. And then lastly, speculation. Basically just how do they think the country is going to go in the long term? Then we're going to talk briefly about the effects of movements in the terms of trade and the exchange rate and changes in international competitiveness in the domestic macroeconomic goals and living standards. And that's going to tie in a little bit with what we do in lesson five. So our learning intention continues to be to understand how global transactions impact living standards in Australia. And your success criteria today is that you can distinguish between exchange rate appreciation and depreciation. And you can apply changes to international factors to aggregate demand and the domestic macroeconomic goals. So with exchange rates, some textbooks that you look at are going to talk about two types of exchange rates. In terms of what VCAR has asked about in the past and what is specifically listed in the study design, um, we look at essentially the exchange rate and not the trade weighted index. Some schools will still do the trade weighted index, but it hasn't been examinable in quite a few years. So it's extra information, which is useful, but not really for the exam purposes. So we have individual exchange rates, which express how many currency units for each country can be purchased with one Australian dollar. And we also have a floating exchange rate, which refers to the fact that the value of our dollar is determined by the forces of supply and demand. So if there's more demand for the Australian dollar, it appreciates in value. If there's less demand for it or more supply of it, it depreciates in value. So when the dollar goes up in value, we call that an appreciation. When it goes down in value, we call it a depreciation. So how this then relates between some of the major indicators we've looked at in this topic so far. So with the current account and net foreign debt, if there's a rise in a current account deficit, this means that Australia has a greater reliance on overseas borrowing and foreign capital. That's going to increase our net foreign debt. If the Australian dollar is rising, this makes exports fall and imports rise. So that means there is less credits and more debits which is going to increase the current account deficit or decrease the current account surplus, depending on what we are in at the time. And then with net foreign debt and the Australian dollar, net foreign debt is a really interesting one because in the short term, if net foreign debt increases, it actually is going to put upward pressure on the Australian dollar because when we borrow money from overseas, we have to exchange that into Australian dollars, which makes more demand for the Australian dollar and therefore appreciates its value. In the long term, it will depreciate the Australian dollar as we have to pay that debt off and pay interest repayments on that debt and therefore we're going to supply more Australian dollars on the foreign exchange market but in the short term it's going to lead to an appreciation so with net foreign debt in the Australian dollar um, short term is going to equal an appreciation of the Australian dollar and long term is going to lead to a depreciation of the Australian dollar so Looking at some general 
trends of how these things have gone over time. We talked a little bit last lesson about the terms of trade, how it has been increasing to record levels recently. It has started to fall a little bit now. But what this means for aggregate demand is there are more injections coming in in terms of the value we receive for our exports relative to leakages going out for our imports. That's obviously really favorable for economic growth and unemployment as there's more aggregate demand overall. And that's going to be favorable as long as it doesn't get back below 100. So the moment that gets below 100, then that is going to be unfavorable. With our current account balance, we have had a current account surplus over the last few years, and this is fueled by two main things. Our current account surplus has been fueled by record low interest rates. So low interest rates have meant that we've had less interest repayments on our foreign debt. And so that has been really positive at meaning we've got less debits going out. So that's brought net primary incomes to be a little bit lower overall, as you can see here when um, interest rates were the lowest. And also we've been fueled by an incredibly high trade balance, which has been fueled by China's recovery and demand for our commodities. So demand for commodities. So low interest rates and demand for commodities have made our um, current account balance into a surplus and a really strong surplus at that. So that has been a recent um, the trend in it that we've been in a surplus over the last few years. The exchange rate has been depreciating um, at under 70 US cents, um, depending on when you check this, it's going to be very different by the time you check this in six months time, but that has basically been fueled by um, increased import spending as well as um, the low interest rates that Australia has relatively to the rest of the world because the rest of the world have been increasing their interest rates at a higher rate and therefore there hasn't been as much demand for the Australian dollar in that way. Net foreign debt has been increasing. Uh, governments have been continually using budget deficits and therefore had some reliance on foreign borrowing to finance those budget deficits. And therefore that has increased net foreign debt, which is over a trillion dollars. And then we've got some recent AD and AS factors just in general that have impacted our external transactions. So changes in economic activity overseas and our terms of trade index. Specifically, this is China buying our commodities exports. So China is a great um, example for that. Changes in the exchange rate for the Australian dollar, obviously similar kind of thing. Changes in consumer confidence, business confidence, and disposable income. At the moment, all of these things are falling because we are worried about the future, and therefore that may have negative impacts on some external transactions, but positive impacts on some like the current account balance. Changes in interest rates. Interest rates are continuing to rise and should rise probably more times by the time you watch this. So that is obviously going to have a big impact. If our interest rates increase relative to our overseas trading partners, it's going to bring in more foreign investment. And then changes in government defense spending and foreign aid. Um, obviously, foreign aid being a debit going out, that can have large impacts there. Then aggregate supply side factors, a deficiency in national savings and big interest rate differentials with overseas. Savings have started to increase ever since COVID. So that um, has been less of a factor in recent times. We can growth in labor productivity. We have been struggling since the late nineties with growth in labor productivity, and therefore it makes us um, struggle to be internationally competitive. And therefore we are less able to operate in the global market as well as other countries. Uh, changing oil prices, oil prices have been surging in recent years, and that's increasing cost of production and making us less competitive. So it's going to increase cost of production. Changing in real unit labor costs, the minimum wage went up by 5.3% last year, which is obviously going to make things more expensive for businesses to produce. They're going to pass that on through higher prices, makes us less competitive worldwide. And severe climatic conditions have been really getting Australia recently with floods, bushfires, etc. Um, really damages our natural resources, makes us less efficient, less competitive, and makes it more difficult to produce overall. And so that's it for exchange rates and some recent overall factors in general. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment below. I'd love to help you. Um, email me, sean at therunningeconomy.com. We'll be back in the last lesson to talk about international competitiveness and things that Australia is good at with it and things that Australia is bad at with it. And then we'll be all done with Unit 3, Area Study 3, Australia and the World Economy. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.